And oh, that's incredible, Buck. Well, it certainly shows that there are no more garden jitters. We've seen several demonstrations. On Monday night, Illinois came out with four men on the floor. Nice pass by Here's Sampson. Riker. Now we got a foul. You have to be impressed the way the big man, Ralph Sampson, looks for the open man and hits him. Again now, he makes his entry down the baseline. Good position by Brewer. Sampson wisely doesn't charge. Feeds back. Riker, a slashing forward, takes it to the basket, draws the foul. And Mark Hall picks up his first personal foul from Madison. The is down by nine. The finals of the NIT, a super field put together by the MIBA, the Metropolitan Intercollegiate Basketball Association, the sponsors of the NIT. Member schools, Fordham University, New York University, St. John, Wagner College, and Manhattan College. And Lee Raker on the line, trying to get the Cavaliers closer. His first point of the ball game. And the rebound is pulled down by Holmes. 18-10 in favor of Minnesota. Spencer Ross, Bucky Waters, and Andy Musser for Madison Square Garden. Here is Darryl Mitchell. McHale. And his back does look good. Finds Brewer for the turnaround. Oh! Rolled off, and we got a foul. Offensive foul on the Golden Gophers. One zone that time, McHale took it to the baseline at 6-11, lofted the pass up over the defense to Brewer. That ball was in and out, and Coleman coming from the back was called for the foul. Eight-point lead for the Golden Gophers. Virginia patiently up floor with Jeff Jones, number 24, directing the offense. Lee Raker, he certainly can shoot. On the season, a 45% shooter. Virginia has hit just five of 15 shots in this ball game, only 33% from the floor. Six point Minnesota lead. This is McHale. They look for Brewer, the 7 2 man, and a count. He was fouled in the play. Well, he's picked right up where he was last night. McHale at 6 11 again, drilling that zone right inside to Brewer. Once he gets it, there really isn't much you can do about it. The only guy that can stop him is Ralph Sanson, and he has just entered the game. Foul on the play is on Terry Gates. And here is Brewer. Has the three-point play. And Minnesota, once again, a nine-point lead. That has been their largest margin, 21 to 12. Minnesota doing a slight trap out of their 2-3, trying to keep the ball from rotating to the other side. Raker, the rebound, McHale. Here's a three on two, make it four on two, break. Tucker trying to find Brewer, and a good defensive play as Raker came back quickly to break up that break. Raker's a tremendous competitor. For those in the Big Ten area, uh, I would liken him to uh, Kevin Boyle of Iowa. That same size, same toughness, good shooter. Pardon the redundancy, breaking up the break, but I guess it's correct, Buck. That's exactly what Raker did. Here's Brewer, and all with plenty of room. That's what happens when you got a 7-2 man. You got a slough off on him. Brewer goes up one more time. Sampson with the reject. And the rebound pulled out by Jones. Raker, and we got a traveling violation on Lee Raker. Ralph Sampson, 7-4, going up against Brewer. A very exclusive uh, club. Sampson misses the first one. Notice how Brewer doesn't bring that ball down. He keeps it up, and he's really back above the rim when 7-4 Sampson drills it out on 7th Avenue. Now, you really have to look at that and say, was it goaltending because he was above the rim? Very close call. Darrell Mitchell, number 30, back in the lineup. Kevin McHale gets his first rest of the evening for Minnesota. Nine-point lead for the Golden Gophers. It's been their largest. Here's Holmes looking to make it 11. The rebound pulled down by Hall. And Minnesota controlling those offensive boards. This is Brewer. Holmes turning on Gates. Sampson with a beautiful reject. He's coming from the weak side to make all those blocks. The only way to go is right at him. Anytime he can come and help, he's going to do that, as he did in the semifinals all night long. He already holds the NIT a reject record with nine, which he did in the first round against Lafayette. Broke a record of seven by Detroit's Terry Tyler back in 78. And there's a rebound for Sampson, who's averaging 15 rebounds a game here at the NIT. Lee Raker. That was Lee Raker. Raker, second field goal. 
14, Minnesota by seven. Holmes. Here's Mitchell. And we're going to get a foul. And it's going to be on the University of Virginia. Now check it. We got a timeout. We have no personal foul. 8-14. Left of the first half. Let's okay. go basketball tournament. The cheerleaders are here for the University of Minnesota. You're looking right now at the University of Virginia cheerleaders. And everybody having a good time at the 43rd NIT. Over 15,000 here. And that's incredible, Spencer, because it's live in New York City on television. And it's a tribute again to Pete Carlissimo and the MIBA. A, a tremendous field, and uh, the teams that have gotten here have played thrilling games. There's talent and the enthusiasm. They had dueling pep bands in the lobby of the hotel. It was like eight on the Richter scale. <laughs> the Kale back in the lineup, and the rebound pulled down by Garland Jefferson. Jeff Klein into the lineup for the first time, number 23 for the University of Virginia. Bringing Samson up high now against the zone. Jefferson. Rebound pulled down by Tom Owens, number 45. He's into the lineup for the first time. He'd been a starter most of this season. And about three weeks ago, it had been diagnosed that Owens is suffering uh, from a duodenal ulcer. And the young man lost a dozen pounds in Virginia. Happy to have him back. So's his family and so's Tom. Here's Jeff Klein. Seven and a half remaining in the first half. Virginia has trailed virtually throughout. Here's Sampson. Looks inside, finds Owens. The rebound, Holmes got batted in the eye. Raker goes to the hoop. Holmes is still holding his head. Here comes Tucker for the Golden Gophers. Now we got an official's timeout as down the other end of the floor, as you see it, Gary Holmes holding onto his eye. He got a, a hand in his face, and the young man is definitely in pain. And a good call by the referee in stopping play. Mikhail misses the block. He can only stop it because it was Minnesota that had the ball. Man, that's fierce board play. It looked like Raker trying to create the loose ball, got a little bit of ball, and got some of uh, some of his right eye. Now, the coach, Jim Dutcher, has a choice now. He can take him out or, or be charged with a timeout. Uh, if he makes a substitution, there's no timeout charge. If he elects to leave him in, he will be charged with a timeout. So he is making the substitution. This ben Coleman's coming in. Coleman is a freshman from North High School in Minneapolis, Minnesota. University of Minnesota cheerleaders on the sidelines as Gary Holmes gets a rest. Minnesota has the basketball. 21-14, Golden Gophers by seven. They've led by as many as nine. This is Coleman, number 54. Since Sampson came back in the game and Virginia State man for man, Brewer has not scored. Mitchell. Tucker, Coleman had the ball and Raker had his arm. Lee Raker, number 25, picks up the personal foul. And on Raker, that is personal Raker foul number one. That is, is the sixth foul team foul on foul. the University six. of Virginia. Each team has six. Next foul, we get the one and one. So Mitchell will inbound for the Golden Gophers. This is McHale, Owens guarding him. And the steal, Raker has it. Jeff Klein, he can push the ball up. Tom Owens fires. Klein gave Virginia a very fine semifinal game Monday night when they were resting Jeff Jones, and he's off to a good start here in the first half. Terry Holland began to use him. Uh, originally, he'd been using Doug Newberg, and Klein looked good on Monday night, as you said, Bucky. Newberg was very tentative against the pressure of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Lee Raker with another steal, but he gives it back to Coleman, and we're going to get a foul. Lee Raker picks it up. Well, where Raker is, there'll be action. Playing Ben Coleman tough, giving away about four inches. He thought he had the ball, and he did. Tried to make the outlet pass. Coleman gets it back. Raker goes back for another swipe, and this time gets a whole lot of forearms. Raker would be a lot better shooter, except he has so much skin under his fingernails, usually uh, the opponent's skin. I think it really does affect his shooting touch. He's a scrapper. So here we got a one and one, and on the line is Ben Coleman, the freshman from Minneapolis, and the rebound is pulled down by Mike Owens of Virginia. Raker's second personal foul of the ball game. This is Jeff Klein. 
as Jeff Jones on the bench getting a rest from Terry Holland. Raker. Here's Sampson. And Ralph Sampson, his third field goal, six points, and Virginia has battled back there within three. When Minnesota went to the 1 2 2 zone, Sampson left the low post and came up high, and he's been unstoppable up there. If but he isn't scoring, he's making the great pass. The tail on the miss and the rebound by Jefferson. Virginia has scored six in a row. Looking for eight. Here's Raker. And the rebound, Owens, but Owens knew it. Yes, I did push him off, and the foul is on me. And Mike just looked up and said, you caught me. There he is, Mike Owens, number 45 of the University of Virginia. Raker putting up the good jumper from the corner. As percentage dictates, the ball goes to the weak side. <laughs> and uh, just, just, a little, just a little nudge there. Not much. So the one and one, and on the line is Trent Tucker, a 6'5 sophomore from Flint, Michigan, who's been averaging nearly 11 points a ball game. And Bucky, I gotta tell you, this is some kind of excited crowd here at the finals of the NIT. You have to keep looking out there to see who's playing because most of the chants are Big Ten, Big Ten, and ACC, ACC. It's uh, become a prestige thing. Of course, Virginia is the only Atlantic Coast Conference team left in the hunt for postseason honors. There are three remaining in the Big Ten. Last year's final here between Indiana and Purdue was an all Big Ten final with Indiana winning 53-52. Here's Jeff Klein for the University of Virginia. 5-14 left in the first half as Lee Raker fires. And Raker with seven points. He leads the Virginia scores and the Cavaliers again with a three. I still don't think that the 1-2-2 is Minnesota's best bet against Virginia because its weaknesses are the baseline and the high post. And that's where the strength of Virginia is, with Lamp and Raker shooting on the baseline and Ralph Sampson in the middle. There's Tucker, and it's picked up by Mike Owen. Raker was breaking, did not box Tucker out, and a good play by Mike Owen. Here's Klein for the Cavaliers. They can move within one. Mike Owens, it's a one-point ball game. Second field goal, Virginia's within one. Jim Dutcher wants to talk it over with his Golden Gophers from Madison Square Garden, where it all. Jim Dutcher, the head coach of the University of Minnesota, his ball club was leading it 21 to 12. Since then, they've been outscored 10 to 2, and Virginia now within one point, 23 22, and off that 1 2 2 zone, as you say, Bucky. Minnesota have a problem. Oh, Jim Dutcher's a fine coach. I, I don't know whether it be man for man or two, three, or whether he'll come down and trap a little more, but he's gonna do something to get Virginia out of that groove. He was an assistant coach and a Michigan graduate, but he was an assistant coach under Johnny Orr there. Of course, we saw a fine Wolverine team fall in the quarterfinals to uh, Virginia in Charlottesville. So here's Minnesota with a one-point lead. They have gone cold. They started out hot, eight for 12. They have now hit one of their last 11 shots from the floor. Here's Holmes. McHale has it battered away. Jones, here's Owens! And missed the easy one. McHale with a rebound. A pretty feed to Owens. Look at Lee Raker. He's all over the floor, Buck. He's some competitor. You got, if, you, if there's World War III, I want him in a foxhole with me. I love him. Holmes. Mitchell. Minnesota stays cold, and Jeff Jones has the rebound. This is Raker. The Cavaliers can move ahead. Jeff Lamp, and they are ahead. We talked earlier about Lamp and the fact that he had given up some of his game. He loves to post up the guards. He's very effective inside. He's shooting one-third less free throws, and he's a heck of a, uh, a swing man inside. But with Sampson in there, there just isn't enough room. So Virginia with a lead, looking to make it three. Owens is called for traveling. The ball will go over to the Golden Gophers with 3.05 remaining. Randy Brewer is back in the lineup, number 45 for the Golden Gophers as he replaces Gary Hall. Virginia, seven turnovers, seven for the University of Minnesota as the Cavaliers have battled back, outscoring Minnesota now 12 to two. Here's Mitchell. 
McHale, Brewer, good position, shooting over Sanders. Samson got caught on the high side. You've got to play those big men on the baseline side to force them back toward the top of your defense. If you make a mistake on the baseline, you're dead. The other way, by playing baseline side and forcing up, you got weak side help and you got help from the top. And believe me, for those seven footers out there, you've got to have help. You can't do it by yourself, even if you're seven foot. Here's Owens coming right back for the University of Virginia. And his third field goal puts the Cavaliers out in front. 26 to 25 with 224 Terry remaining. Gates. Terry Gates comes back into the lineup as this crowd goes wild. Gates replaces Mike Owen. If you're watching this game in black and white, you must be having a difficult time between the contrast of the yellow shirts of Minnesota and the orange of Virginia. There's a story behind the orange shirts and that the last time they wore orange was when they won the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship in 1976. They had ordered them to wear them again for the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament this year, but they didn't come in time. So supposedly this is a, a good luck omen, and we'll see how it works out. Well, Terry Holland, a believer in such omen. First game of the NIT, he did not start Lee Raker. He was suffering with a flu bug, and he hasn't started him since. And you see how important Lee Raker is. That foul, by the way, on Ralph Sampson, his second, as we look at Randy Brewer, as he gets set to shoot. Well, you know, coaches, they're, they're a squirrely breed. Spencer, <laughs> they got they got all kind of hypes and gimmicks. And uh, certainly staying with a with a lineup that's winning, uh, even if it isn't your best players, that's uh, that's kind of traditional. You did that too, right, Bob? Oh yeah, Daryl Royal said it one time. Uh, he said it best of any. I think he said, "You dance with who brung you." Now, grammatically, that's not correct, but whoever's out there doing it, whatever they believe is right and it's winning, they win. Jeff Jones with the ball, and we're going to get a foul. Minnesota thought it should have been on Jones. It is not. The foul is on Trent Tucker. And on Tucker, that is his third first check, and it's on Mitchell. Mitchell's first personal foul. Had it been on Tucker, that would have been his third. And to the line goes Jeff Jones to shoot one and one for the Cavaliers of Virginia. Jones still looking for his first point. Jeff Lampo at 30 in the semifinals has but one basket tonight for two points. Jeff Jones really amazes me. You look at him and you say point guard and you say no way. I know we can press that guy and force uh, Virginia to do some things they don't want to do. In the last three NIT games, Jeff Jones has played 108 minutes, has four turnovers, and has averaged nine assists in NIT play. That's really incredible. He seems to play the game of basketball mathematically, cutting down angles and compensating for his lack of speed. Remember, he's playing with a, a bad knee. There's the steal by Lamp. And Klein on the lineup replacing Jones. One point Virginia leads, 28-27, a minute 40 left in the half. Minnesota going man now. A good move by Jim Dutcher. He had to give him another look. Here's Gates firing, and the rebound pulled down by Brewer. Hacked away by Klein, but taken back by Mitchell. Minnesota trails by one. The Golden Gophers can move back out in front right here. Mark Call, the 6 2 sophomore from Springfield, Massachusetts. This is McHale. And the rebound pulled down by Jeff Lamb. And Jeff Clyde slows things down. I look at the Virginia bench. The Cavaliers are going to play for one with a minute four remaining in the half. And they don't have Sampson in there. They like to hold on. This is Lattimore. Rebound pulled down by Tucker. Leads to McHale. He'll take it. Kevin McHale, you can see why he is so highly taunted by the professional scouts. 6'11", 240, but great hands. As you see him lumber down that sideline, you know, he looks like a bust, but he moves like a greyhound. He split through two defenders back there. I didn't think there was any way that if he took it to the basket, he could avoid the charge, but he did. He's still holding his back. 35 seconds as you take a look at the clock. Virginia down by one to Minnesota. We got a foul on 